started with a Freedom 35 plan. It wasn't about getting rich, it was about needing less money. It was about owning our own land, but being debt free. And now, we spend way less time working, and way more time doing whatever we want. We'd lived off grid before and loved it. We knew that it was the best way to live cheap and be surrounded by forests, rivers, and mountains. Back in 2011, we bought a beautiful forested 40 acre piece of land in Northern British Columbia. And the land is a lot of fun. It also provides us with all of our electricity, heat, water, and most of our food. I'm just about ready to plant carrots in my straw bale gardens. I love straw bale gardening, it's so easy. You just sprinkle a little dirt on top and plant your seeds in. No weeding, it's awesome. To keep our house debt free, we built it small and simple. We placed the cedar post directly into the ground like a pole barn, so there was no need for excavation or a concrete foundation. We used locally milled timbers and log rafters that we cut ourselves. The whole house was wrapped with plywood and then foam insulation with a couple giant south facing windows. It has board and batten siding and a living roof. The whole thing cost less than 25 grand. This is our little off grid house we built. Come check it out. It's small, it's about 900 square feet. And so with seven of us, we're making the best of a small space. Here's our entryway. So this is our living room, and our kitchen, and our dining room, and our school room. We've got some really nice big south facing windows. So in the winter time and spring and fall we get lots of sun in here. And in the summertime, uh, the sun's high enough that it doesn't get too hot in here. Here's our main wood stove. It's a Blaze King a catalytic stove. It's super efficient and it's right in the center of the house. This is how we heat up water for a lot of things, either dishes or showers, or we can put a kettle on here to make some tea. So here's our giant multi-purpose table. It's for eating and preparing food, but also for homeschooling and whatever else. Here is the girl's room. It's about seven feet by seven feet, which is perfect to build in two single beds. So this is for the older girls. Master bedroom. Nothing too fancy here. The last room in this mansion is the little girl's room. So this thing's 16 feet long and about seven feet wide in here. And so we got a queen size bed. And we got two like little, they're kind of like mini single beds. We first started collecting rainwater off our woodshed roof and now off our shop roof. We have 900 gallons of water storage underneath the shop floor where it stays cold. The whole system costs $1,000 compared to about $20,000 for a well. The house isn't plumbed, so we collect the water from the shop and carry it to the house in buckets. And because we don't have running water, we don't generate a lot of wastewater. The kitchen sink and the shower empty into a shallow drainage field in the backyard. The Berkey is awesome. This thing is a passive water, water filter. So you can pour whatever water you want in the top here. And it's just got ceramic filters in there. So they're like 0.1 thousandths of a micron or something like that. So it'll get rid of any suspended solids, but also a lot of bacteria and all that bad stuff. So pour it in here, and hours later, this thing slowly fills up. For showers, we can heat up a bucket like this on the wood stove or the wood cook stove. And this is like the only running water in the house. It's kind of running. There's a pump here. A pump and a switch, and it'll pump the water up to that tank up there. And the tank comes out through a nozzle in the shower. So it's kind of like a one-time use situation. You fill it up, you drain it all, and you fill it up again next time. 
So the bathroom's pretty standard composting toilet, bucket style, very, very simple. It's a regular toilet seat. It looks all pretty normal, except in there, instead of water, there's just a pile of sawdust. And after every time you use it, you put in more sawdust. Electricity is no problem at all. We started off with a single solar panel and a simple RV system. This feeds the house with 12 volts for LED lighting, phone chargers, and a music player. After a couple years, we invested in a two and a half kilowatt system that allows us to run a deep freeze, a fridge, a washing machine, and pretty well anything else we want. The system has an excess of power most of the year. Only during prolonged snowy or cloudy periods in the winter do we have to run a backup generator. The Jenny runs less than 40 hours a year. Under here is our little 12 volt system to power the house. Underneath the bread basket, we got the batteries and we have an AC charger. So if we ever have to run a generator, we can charge batteries through this guy. This is our solar charger, which is running all the time. Blinking green means it's charging right now. Uh, just some various breakers. And this guy's the battery monitor, 99% charged it says. And it's 99% charged or better eight months out of the year. In the winter time, it can get a little sketchy. Okay, we've got these two new lithium ion batteries. They're lithium ferrous phosphate. And they are replacing this whole huge bank of lead acid batteries. We, we've been running on these for a few years now. We just got these ones, bolted them to the wall. We cut over to those. We've been using them for a couple months. And now we've found a new home for these batteries. This is a super old cook stove. Little firebox in here. And it quickly gets up to temperature for the oven. And a warming shelf up here. The cook stove is awesome for cooking and baking. The girls and I have mastered the cook stove and along with some cast iron pots and pans, we can make anything, including pies, cakes, croissants. Now this, Rose's sink, this is a trick sink. See, what you can do here that you can't do in a normal house is you can turn on the tap and nothing will happen. It's very special. Anyways, it's just a sink. <laughs> so we got to pour water in there from a from a bucket, but the drain does work and We have a gray water system out behind the house So Rosa's kitchen is a bit small for the amount of people she feeds, but she does a great job Her mixer is Pretty nice to have and really because it only runs a couple uh, Minutes a day, and it's, it's really only a couple hundred watts. It doesn't really there's no issue with it in the solar system. Same thing with the blender. Uh, that's no problem. The toaster, however, is a seasonal appliance. Uh, in the wintertime, it's off limits. It's just too much power. Okay, fridge. It's a normal fridge. And this is the reason why we have the big solar system in the shop. It's so that we can run the fridge and the deep freeze. Living off-grid for us includes a few different types of chores. We carry water into the house, we empty compost buckets, we collect firewood. But our biggest challenge here is just maintaining our road in the winter. We often get five to six feet of snow and we clear about eight kilometers to the nearest maintained road. Homeschooling is both a requirement and our preference out here. The kids only take about two to three hours a day to complete their regular studies. We want to make sure that they can transition to university, but at the same time, our main goal is to ensure that they learn in everything they do. We don't want to focus on pure academics. We want them to learn to be great people with broad and varied life experiences. The girls love to ride horses and they're always riding horses or otherwise spending time with them. And Sarah, our oldest, keeps bees. There's always something to do around here. We love to go down to the river to fish or to swim. We like to go for walks, either hunting or gathering or just exploring. We love it out here. And we can't go back. Gridlessness is too good. 